Today, I'm looking into the XKD X Power budget power meter. Okay, kicking off with a bit of backstory behind these units. They are very, very cheap, between $400 and $500, Aussie dollars, Canadian dollars, US, depending on where you buy them from. They are about half the cost of an equivalent Stages or 4 i which this unit is very similar to. Very similar, I'll get into the details in a sec. So it depends on what you put value on. Get to the end of the video and you can choose from there. So the unit comes out of China via AliExpress or eBay, and there's very little in the way of reviews. And what reviews are out there are translated by your web browser. I'm pretty sure the crab is delicious isn't a term that we should be seeing in power meter reviews or comments. And also the data that's out there on these units is absolutely horrible. Look, I'll, I'll be honest from the outset, it's a horror show. What they're actually showing online is comparisons of the XKD units up against an SRM and a G3 PowerTap hub. And the data they've published in these adverts shows that this unit is 30 to 40 to 50 watts lower than those. So a lot of people have steered clear of these. That doesn't stop people from asking the question what they're about but not a lot of people have actually purchased one. So I have one, let's dive into it and see what it's all about. The unit itself is a single-sided pre-glued crank arm. So I think stages, think 4i, but it's ant plus only. This does not include Bluetooth, Bluetooth Smart for the use of recording watts. Uh, a lot of the advertisements do say the keyword Bluetooth it is not Bluetooth. That is not quite right. Lost in translation again, this is ant plus only. The Bluetooth connectivity is used only for firmware updates of the unit. And when it's in Bluetooth mode, it appears as a heart rate monitor. So there's some weirdness happening there, but ant plus only, if you need this to be Bluetooth to any other Bluetooth device direct, you need a bridge, an extra cost. So again, cheap becomes not so cheap in this respect. And XKD appear to be only Shimano crank arms as well. So you can go from the 105 to Durace and across different models of those, but Shimano only for now. With the XKD power meter now on the bike with the PowerTap P1 pedals, it was time to put it up against the Tax Neo in my standard Llama lab test. So 10 minutes just riding along, just riding along into my 20 minute block here, which is 10 minutes at 200 watts, which was looking very, very good. Now this wasn't 10% off or 20% off. We're talking one, two, maybe four watts at 200, up to 250 watts for 10 minutes. Things were very, very good. We're within four or five watts there. And then into the sprint, let's dive closer into the sprint. Response time, not too bad. As I'd expect for a left only, it's not gonna be as responsive, but that actually works really well. Now over to the erg mode, which is some over and unders. Again, tracking superbly well for what I thought was gonna be an absolute horror show. Um, tracking super well with the P1 pedals there. Within a few watts of the Neo, erg mode does get a bit ugly. And then into the 400 watts for one minute, Again, a little bit of lag there at the start. Nothing really to worry about though. I'm really picking the peanuts out of this for that. Overshoots a little bit, things stabilize, and then for 400 watts, just riding along, just riding along. So uh, look, we've got about a 10 watt discrepancy there. But if you zoom down here into the left right power meter measurement, it's just me being a little bit wonky there. So power tap, P1 left, 199, XKD, 202. Again, Super, super close. So that ride indoors was an absolute eye-opener. That was super accurate and not what I expected at all from this cheap power meter. Um, and then a slow ramp test there at the end. So again, just riding along, just riding along at about 115 watts with three power meters there. So the XKD, the PowerTap P1 pedals, and the Neo all happily in agreement. And then I spun it up to about 130 RPM. At about 120 RPM onwards, the XKD was a little bit laggy, but I'll give it a break there. As you can see, that the data looks looking really, really good. So indoors, I thought, okay, that's a once-off fluke. We'll take it outside. Next day, out to Mount Warren Heap here in Ballarat. Two sections that I'll dive into from this. So again, 15 to 20 minutes riding along, stop, recalibrate everything, re-zero everything. What we have here is 
up a small hill, just ticking along, ticking along, and then out of the saddle. Again, pretty good. 100, no, what have we got? 397 versus 390, so seven watts at near 400 watts difference. It's not too bad, that's just one point, but you can see them track very, very well there. Now I'll cover two longer hill climbs at different power rates. Um, here's a super steep hill at the start, so I'm a bit wonky out of the saddle left, right. From then on, absolutely brilliant. Uh, within a few watts here, so five or six watts in that particular point just there at Mount Warren Heaps. Again, really good. The last section we'll look at for outdoor ride number one was Black Hill, which was over 400 watts there for not quite a minute or so, but you can see there, really, really close. Definitely a lot better than the data we saw online from the Chinese website. Onto a downhill and then a slight uphill out of the saddle. Uh, again, that's looking really, really good. So the XKD that I've installed up against the P1 pedals, super good data inside and out, and no drops either. So the reliability that I've had with this, really, really good. To add one more data point from outside there, because this is where most of our rides are being done, I put the Vector 3s on the bike today. New firmware, new batteries, good to go, everything zeroed. And again, very similar results to the first ride outside. Uh, these things are really, really in alliance. They're not gonna be one for one, because again, left only, and then with the Vector 3s especially, when you start pedaling, they need to sort of agree with each other and then start sending the data. So there's a bit of a lag with the Vector 3s in some instances but just riding along, just riding along into a bit of a kick sprint. It's looking very, very good there. Uh, next one is coming home, back with a nice big tailwind. What can I say? That data matches, not one for one, but good enough for me to be happy with that. Jumping into the mean max powers from ride number three here. There is actually two power meters here, so there's the Vector 3 up against the XKD, so we'll look at the one minute, 313 versus 319 on the vectors. Look at the five minute effort, 260 versus 261. 10 minute effort, 251, 253, 20 minute, and it's just one for one from there on. So that data is looking brilliant. I, To be honest, I did not expect that out of this cheaper unit at all. That's matching outdoor rides and indoor rides. Very, very close. Well, as close as you could be expected with left only um, for a quarter of the price. That is absolutely phenomenal. So after three rides there, I was super, super impressed with the XKD. I was expecting a horror show of power numbers, dropouts, like it's a cheap unit. You'd think it just, it couldn't do what it was doing. It was matching my $1,500 Vector 3s. It was matching my over $1,000 P1 pedals. It was matching the Neo. It wasn't dropping out. It was reliable, it was responsive, and it was as good as what I'd ever expect from a left-only power meter. So, what's the issue? Well, it's time to shoot the Tooth Fairy. It's not all fun and games, and there are some showstoppers here that may mean this is not the power meter to look into. First up, that's only three rides. I'll need a lot more data in all conditions. We need to ride it in rain, hail, and shine. That's three rides in perfect conditions done. So there's that. Compatibility-wise, I couldn't get the XKD working with the element or element bolt. So I'm not sure if it was signal strength or something like that. It would detect it, but then it just disappeared. I couldn't calibrate it, wouldn't pick up any data. So I'm not sure what's going on there. A theory that I have is related to the ant ID they use. Now we know ant ID, every ant device has an ant ID. They also have a manufacturer ID. The manufacturer ID of ant devices is typically hidden away. You don't see them on your head units, but it's assigned by the ant plus alliance to every manufacturer of ant or certified ant plus devices. XKD aren't certified. They don't appear on the uh, thisisant.com. They're using 255, which is reserved for development. Probably not a big one, but for me, that just raises my spidey senses of XKD as a company themselves. If they haven't gone to the Ant Plus Alliance to get certified and their own manufacturer ID, what other shortcuts have they made as well to get this out there super cheap? Um, I'm not quite comfortable with that. Speaking of not being comfortable, this one, the Showstopper. Follow-up support and the company's website. Yesterday, the website itself was redirecting me to a malware site that was trying to install Adobe Flash, which wasn't Adobe Flash, it was malware. So the site's been hacked. Today, the website does not even work. XKD.com is not loading. I've had to dive over to uh, the Wayback Machine to pull up the XKD website. And from there, we can see the support site, which was what it was like a few months ago. There's no technical support. There's nothing there. There's no contact. There's a contact us with an email, but the company does not have any technical support. So. If you were to buy one of these and have an issue, uh, I don't know. That's something that you've got to factor into when you purchase something. It's all good to have the hardware in your hands, and it's all good for this to be accurate data, 
What happens if it fails? What happens when you need follow-up support? You're not just paying for hardware. When you go and buy something from a reputable company who has gone and got themselves registered with the AMP Plus Alliance, you're buying more than just the hardware. You're buying future support, you're future-proofing yourself and your purchase. Sure, you can go buy two of these for the price of one other power meter, but then what if two break? You're well behind the eight ball. So there we have it, the highs and the lows of going with the budget power meter. The highs, cheap price, killer accuracy, easy to install, then the wheel started falling off. Non-compatibility there with my element and element bolt, not sure what's going on there. The manufacturer ID in the Ant being developer, that's kind of dodgy. And for me, the showstopper, the support and support website, just not being available and trying to install malware on my machine. That was uh, <laughs> not quite expected. So they're the compromises. When you're buying a device, you're not just buying the hardware and what it does, you're buying the overall experience plus the ongoing support that you can get from a company when things start going south. So in my case, those three rides, nothing went south just yet, but my spidey senses are tingling. There we have it. More information about the XKD power meter. Again, that killer power accuracy was a surprise. Watch for the rest. There's some catches. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.